Man, I was trying to warn you guys that like this new servant could have been really, really good. And look at that, another dub for the boys ETL. Because the man, Tai Gong, as I'm going to refer to him as for this video, I know he goes by many different names, but we're just going to call him Tai Gong for simplicity's sake. This man is absolutely broken. He is disgustingly good. There are a few things that I could critique him on, like, oh, maybe he's lacking crit damage or he's lacking a defense down. But this dude literally has like every buff type possible except for a defense down and he's missing crit damage but funnily enough those are the two things that scotty gives him because spoiler alert he's also a really solid quick servant as well so yeah really sucks for people like me who did not get scotty but managed to pull this guy as soon as the banner dropped although that was because i was going for nikki but we don't want to talk about that Anyway, before we analyze this new servant, I can just pretty much sing his praises for the next like 10 minutes. If you have not already, consider clicking that like button and that subscribe button because your boy is on this daily FGO content grind and he stayed up till 2.30 in the morning to make sure I was here when this dude dropped to make sure the video was ready in the morning. So any support does go a long way. If you want to support the channel in a free way, I am affiliated by all means with LD Emulator and Loot Cakes down in the description down below. And no, before anybody asks, if you use an emulator for FGO, you do not get banned. They're not like Bleach Brave Souls or Dokkan or Dragon Ball Legends, some of these other mobile games that just like nuke you from lower earth orbit as soon as they smell you getting on an emulator. FGO is pretty relaxed about it. And finally, if you're absolutely just starving for more content, you can click that join button to become a channel member to get access to bonus content. Or you can come to the Twitch, which is linked down in the description down below as well where I stream every weekday, although I probably won't be streaming until I'm back from vacation, so I wouldn't exactly count on that until then. But with all that being said, enough of the standard YouTuber intro, let's go ahead and just start by talking about my man, Ty Gong's hits. Now, first and foremost, he's got some pretty solid hits. He's rocking 0.60% NP generation and a decent star gen of 9.1%, although I don't really think that's gonna matter all that much for him. He is a quick servant, so, you know, quick chains are kind of the name of the game. So even if his star gen is a little bit lower, because you should be quick chaining all over the place, it's not going to be that big of a deal. It's more important that he has a higher NP gain stat because you want to get to looping with this guy, which really shouldn't be all that hard to do because he has really good hits with four hits on his two quick cards, three on his two arts cards, and five on the extra attack, which the four hits on the quick card kind of make up for the lower star gen because since he has higher hits, he will be genning more stars overall. And because those quick cards do have higher hits, if you're critting on those, he will be getting more NP overall as well. His arts cards especially are going to be more dependent on getting crits because at 0.60%, even with the three hits, it's not really high enough for him to just use normal arts cards to refund a lot of NP. You really do want to make sure you're getting crits on those arts cards whenever you can to refund as much NP as possible. Although he does have something in the back pocket to help him refund his NP if you're struggling to get him to his NP. Now that being said, let's go ahead and talk about his skills. Now skill one might seem a little underwhelming at first because you see, oh, just a bunch of 15% values. That's not that big of a deal, but you got to consider that these are all party wide buffs and he's triple buffing the entire party. He's giving everyone in the party a 15% quick buff, attack buff, and NP damage buff for three turns on a seven turn cooldown. This is probably one of the, if not the most powerful charisma in the game, because if you guys don't know, different buff types are not additive, they're actually multiplicative, meaning that all of these buffs multiply into each other, which not only helps his damage out a lot, but if you're using with other quick servants, it helps their damage out a lot as well. So it makes him function really well as like a secondary DPS. If you wanna bring him as like a secondary buffer, he works really well in that role because this skill is absolutely nutty broken. And again, don't worry, if you think his quick buff is a little bit too low and you're like, how is he supposed to fire his NP? He's not getting enough buffs to his quick cards. Well, again, he has something in the back pocket to help him out with that. But before we talk about that skill on skill three, we gotta talk about skill two, where he's sealing all enemy skills, which is absolutely ridiculous because he could prevent the enemies from getting mad crit buffs, mad attack buffs, applying invincibility or dodge themselves, being able to just pop their NP when they only have one tick left and they give themselves an extra charge and hit you with a surprise NP. He negates all of that, which is super nice. And then he gets two of probably the best damage mods in the game, being a 50% damage mod against divine and a 50% damage mod against demonic enemies, both for three turns. And again, at 50% values, all on a six turn cooldown. Now, what you should already notice if you're an eagle-eyed viewer is that he's now giving himself 
all four buff types, there are four main buff types in the game, those being card buffs, attack buffs, NP damage buffs, and then special damage mods, and he gives himself all four of those. Which means, God forbid you run into any divine or demonic enemy, especially divine, and we'll get to his NP and talk about what happens when he runs into a divine opponent, but if you run into any of them, he is going to be curse smacking them for a massive amount of damage because he has all four damage types multiplying into each other. But again, we'll talk about that a bit more when we get to his NP. Finally, there's his third skill where he basically has a 50% battery because he charges his NP 30% for himself and then 20% for the entire party, which again helps him function really well as a support type servant because he's giving everybody 20% and then he's triple buffing everybody so he can be very good as a support and very good as a DPS. Although I kind of wish there was maybe something else to this skill. Maybe they thought just like the 30% to himself and the 20% for the party was good enough, which truth be told, it is good enough, but I kind of wish maybe it dropped like 30 stars or gave him like 30% NP gain for three turns. Maybe I'm just a little bit greedy, but I just wanted to see a little bit more, but he's already really broken enough as is. But now let's talk about that NP. So it's a six hit AOE quick NP, which kind of helps it out with the lower NP gain because he has higher hits. Well, a bit higher hits. Six is pretty decent when you want to talk about NP hits. So that should help him out when it comes to NP refunding. But this is where things get a little bit insane because he gets a free 150% damage mod against divine enemies. Not tied to overcharge or anything. It's just free with his NP, which means if you have skill two up, when you fire his NP against a divine opponent, he's smacking them with 200% extra damage. Basically meaning this guy is going to be the bane of any divine enemy. And again, divine enemies are rather common nowadays. Whether it be a lot of the more powerful boss type servants or just a lot of the more mid boss enemies having the divine trait, especially the further into the lost boats that we go. So this makes him really good for either farming or boss fights. And then his overcharge just makes him even better by slapping all enemies with a 20 to 40% quick resistance down for three turns. It does not apply first, but again, your next NP is now gonna have all four damage types and the lowering of enemy quick resistance. And if you're using Scotty, lowering their defense as well. So this guy is going to be hitting like a freight train, or if you want him to make someone else hit really hard, he's lowering their quick resistance and then giving them three different buff types to make sure that they hit really hard. So this guy is absolutely nutty when it comes to how good he is. FGO definitely did not drop the ball on this one. He's very straightforward, but very, very good. And it's definitely a step in the right direction if FGO definitely wants to keep the quick meta kind of alive right now. Because as you can see, they buff Scotty and they've been dropping like secret good quick servants here and there just every now and then like they'll drop someone like Van Gogh or like Ashia Doman and now they're dropping Tai Gong over here just little quick servants here and there that are like really good and they kind of just go under the radar then they buff Scotty a little bit and I don't know I just wouldn't be surprised if there's a resurgence when it comes to the quick meta because you just kind of notice all these little trends popping up and then this guy is just absolutely nutty broken so I don't know man just keep your wallets ready for when like Scotty 2.0 drops and then quick blows up as like the main meta once again. But I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments down below. What do you guys think of the man Tai Gong? Again, I'll say it as many times as I have to. I think this man is absolutely disgustingly good. Really the only two main things that he's lacking is a form of survivability and his own crit damage buff. But again, you gotta remember that Scotty, the main quick buffer, not only gives him a quick mana burst, but also gives him 100% quick crit damage for three turns. So he's kind of covered in that department. And then I know it's kind of a meme, but Scotty does give him the one hit of evasion on NP and Tygong does help her get her NP by giving her 20% battery. So if it really does come down to it, he can kind of rely on that. But then again, most fights should be done in three turns when you're using this guy because his damage is rather good even without any of his buffs. And then if you want to take his buffs into account, he is absolutely smacking the competition and they really should not be lasting more than three turns. Like the only cases I could see if they have like a forced like four or five break bars or something, or they forcefully stall out things by having like unremovable invincibility or something like that. Something insane, which I mean, he really wouldn't be able to help anyway, unless you want to like slap a Pierce invincibility CE on him and just get around it. But yeah, would love to hear his thoughts in the comments down below. With all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and get some sleep because it is like three in the morning. <laughs> but you guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace late, guys.